It's hard to find a silver lining to the steepest recession in more than a decade. But the message out of Berlin seems to be that the glass is half full. Germany is the first advanced economy to release its 2020 GDP figures and appears to be faring better than expected. Its 5% contraction is slightly better than analysts predicted and less severe than the 5.7% drop seen after the 2009 financial crisis. Manufacturing, construction and online retail have held steady even as the service and tourism sectors fell sharply. And while Germany posted a record 11.3% drop in the second quarter, the statistics office says the economy stagnated at the end of 2020. That's lifted hopes that Europe's largest economy will avoid a double-dip recession. Unlike its neighbours, France, Italy and the UK, who are all forecast to shrink by more than 9%. Businesses and workers have been largely sheltered by the downturn thanks to unprecedented stimulus spending by Chancellor Angela Merkel's government. I will ensure, together with the finance minister, that we continue to make the necessary financial resources available in the coming months to deal with the challenges and to protect the German economy from an irreversible loss of substance. But perhaps the most decisive number for Germany's economy will be its COVID-19 cases. After keeping rates relatively low through the initial wave, Germany has seen a sharp rise since November. It's on the verge of passing the 2 million mark for total cases, with daily new infections averaging more than 18,000 since the start of the new year. That forced authorities to impose a full lockdown in mid-December. The closure of restaurants, bars, shops and schools has been extended until at least the end of January. Analysts say failure to contain the virus could delay recovery to pre-pandemic levels until 2022. The decisive question in the year ahead is whether the vaccination strategy works and how quickly people can be vaccinated. If we are able to vaccinate enough people to lift all restrictions by summer, then 2021 can be a year of strong recovery. This weekend, Chancellor Merkel's CDU party will choose a successor for when her term ends in September. The leadership change is just one more uncertainty for a country still in the grips of the pandemic. But Germany has proven it can be surprisingly resilient in a crisis. Miranda Lynn, TRT World. Well, for more on this, Bruno Verstraat joins us now from Zurich, his partner and chief economist at Lakefield Partners AG. Welcome back to the program, Bruno. Now, as we heard there, Germany contracted a 5% last year in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic, but it could have been worse. It wasn't as bad as uh, the height of the, uh, Asian, uh, the world financial crisis uh, more than a decade ago. Was it just about the unprecedented government stimulus that... that uh, Germany was able to avoid a bigger contraction? Yes, well, I believe that the uh, that is clearly one of the reasons, but it's also the composition of the German economy, uh, which is less um, relying on uh, services than, for example, Spain, Italy, and even France. Uh, it's very much uh, oriented to the manufacturing, which in the end uh, suffered a bit less. Clearly, um, the second point that uh, plays a role is the stimulus itself. Uh, Germany, having a low debt level, clearly had some ammunition to stimulate or to not stimulate, but to bridge the dark period in the economy uh, towards the recovery. And I think that cyclical bias, together with the 8.1% GDP um, boost uh, that, that was injected within the economy, uh, clearly helped uh, to, to get the damage to a, a much lower level. Yes, and, and it seemed that uh, Germany deployed a lot of that uh, fiscal ammunition. We don't have exact figures, but uh, from reports, it was upwards of one and a half trillion dollars last year that they unleashed in terms of stimulus measures. Now, uh, Germany's economy minister has said that the economy can recover this year without resorting to similar broader stimulus measures that we saw in 2020. Do you agree or will Germany have to revisit those measures again this year? I think it will be a close call. Um, of course, the speed of um, the, the um, uh, vaccination is going to play a role for the entire world to revive. Uh, the good thing is that now Asia, uh, which is an important um, export partner for Germany, is uh, reviving faster. And I think that's where the growth for a lot of the big manufacturing uh, companies in Germany is. So in that sense, I think they need it less. Uh, the whole logistic system, 
uh, with e-commerce has been modernized very quickly. And I think all of that will play a role in order not to need the, the same support measure, measures as was uh, injected already. One headwind, though, is that the, uh, the dollar is, uh, is quite weak and the euro pretty expensive. So that weakens a little bit uh, the export uh, position of Germany. And it remains to be seen how much that will uh, cause uh, as a headwind in order not to get uh, to live up to the expectations on that one. Now, as you mentioned, Germany is in the unique position of having relatively low debt levels compared with its other European neighbours. So when they release their full year figures, uh, what sort of contractions can we expect from some of the major economies in the region? Well, a lot, a lot of that, I think, will, uh, will also be determined by the end of year lockdowns, as already mentioned before. Um, and clearly, I think the countries with the highest exposure to services, such as France, Italy and Spain, I think will clearly suffer much more. How much exactly will depend a lot on uh, how much lockdowns were imposed in the fourth quarter uh, in order to, to get to the final number. But I think it could be double of what we saw in, uh, in Germany. Okay, in the meantime, we'll just wait for those figures to be released. Bruno Verstraat from Lakefield Partners, thank you again for joining us from Zurich.